Okay, silly question now, Angelica. Yeah. Do you fancy a bit of a party? Oh, yes, I love a party. Good, so do I. It's time to party with Pudsey and Tracy. <laughs> turn up to do a special report on the dumping ground, you know, to show where the sort of places the money raised by children in need is spent. So, of course, they're going to need a presenter. You know, someone who's an expert on the subject. Someone who's going to look good on telly. Someone like me. Excuse me, my public awaits. So excited, so excited. Yeah. OK, I'm ready for my close-up. Uh, well, the thing is, they kind of don't want you to present it. What? <laughs> don't they know who I am? Yeah, I think that's the problem. <laughs> Well, they've got, like, a special guest presenter in. Who? <laughs> well, fine, you know, cos it's their loss. So how are you bearing up? OK. <laughs> excuse me. I said excuse me! Oi! Don't diss the bear. Oh, what's the matter with you? TV people are so shallow. Ah, so you're not presenting the programme. Like I care. They're really ready to go on. It's so cool. This stump on the TV. Elaine, can we have a party for Pudsey? <laughs> yeah, can we? We could do some sponsored event. Oh, please. No, it's a great idea. You could raise loads of money and help children in need. Well, I don't want anything to do with it. Stupid bear. I mean, all that money they've raised, I thought they'd make his eye better by now. Elaine, they're ready for you now. <laughs> oh, here it is. It's on. Welcome to a special edition of News Round. This week, in support of children in need, we'll be showing how some of the money you raise is being spent. The first of our reports comes from Cliffside Children's Home with a guest presenter, Justine Littlewood. Hello and welcome to Cliffside. Well, I'll be joined by Elaine Boyack, a social worker. So then, Elaine, tell us... What do you think you're doing? I'm presenting a report. Uh, and what right have you got to do it? She doesn't even live here anymore. What's she playing at? So then, I don't Elaine, know. Well, that it makes great telly. Actually, I did a sponsor's silence for children in need. <sighs> With that gob, but it lasted all of ten seconds. I didn't speak for a week, actually. And I raised 500 pounds. What have you ever done for children need Tracy Beaker? Named and shamed. Well... It's got to hurt. I'm going to be holding a party for Pudsey this Friday. You and half the country. Yeah, well, it isn't just going to be any old party. I mean, there's going to be wall-to-wall -wall celebs, cutting-edge cuisine, top-flight entertainment, basically the party to end all parties. A complete pleasure overload. Well, that sounds when most impressive, with that? Miss... Probably about ten seconds ago. Beaker. Uh, <laughs> Tracy Beaker. <laughs> so impressive. I think we ought to film it next Friday. OK? I think that's a great idea. Excellent. <laughs> Can't wait. Problem. You've just promised live on national TV to organise the party to end all parties. In just five days. So? We can do it! We? Now this is where I was meant to be. Behind a desk, making plans for big events. You know, this could be the start of a whole new career for me. Tracy Beaker, party planner to the stars. Isn't this supposed to be about children in need? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that too. Oh, by the way, Jack, I'd like you to be my runner, you know, doing all my little errands. No, thanks. 
Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. I mean, being my runner means you'll be a vital part of this project. Don't tell the others, but you're going to be the most important cog in my Pudsy party wheel. Really? Absolutely. OK. What do you want me to do first? Go get me some food. I fancy some real top executive nosh. I know crayfish and a rocket salad with a mango and passion fruit smoothie. You got it. <laughs> But... I need a base. Please. It is children in need, after all. OK, you can have half the desk. And I'm sure I can trust you not to take liberties. <laughs> oh, you know me. I believe you've met my PA. OK, Tracy, first up, you've got to delegate jobs to everyone. Second, organise food. Third, sort out decorations. Fourth, run Hello Magazine. Yes, yes, OK, Marco. It's my name on the door, remember? What did you say I have to do first again? Be quiet! <laughs> right, I've got everyone's jobs for the week. Crash, publicity. <laughs> Hayley, lighting. <laughs> Michael, toilets. <laughs> Bouncer, head of security. Security? What about me? Oh, sorry. You're the... <laughs> head of morale. Very important. Why am I head of security? I should be doing food with Duke. Sorry, Tracy's decision's final. I have to have a word with Tracy then. I'll make you an appointment. How's the pain? Making herself comfortable in the office. You know, we can't let her handle this party on her own. I mean, for a start, where does she think she's going to hold it? You're right. <laughs> Put ten people in that lounge and it's crowded. Message from Tracy, FYI. FYI to her too. Uh, no. FYI means for your information. Yeah. As I was saying, FYI, Tracy's ordered the giant marquee for the garden. It'll arrive first thing. <laughs> bouncer, bouncer, bouncer. Listen. Anyone can do food, but head of security means you'll be a vital part of this project. Don't tell the others, but you're going to be the most important cog in my pudsy party wheel. Really? Absolutely. OK, then. Yes? I've come to give a hand organising the party. And what's in it for you? Nothing. I just want the satisfaction of doing a great job for children in need and equal billing of all the publicity. Oh, Justine, thank you so much for the offer. Do you know that's about as tempting as shoving my face into a wasp's nest? Now, there's an idea. You know what they say, if you can't join them, beat them. A marquee! Well, where else was I supposed to hold the party? Get ten people in that living room and it's crowded. Just don't get carried away. <laughs> oh. And see what old Thompson's phone number? No way! Can I have an autograph? Maybe. Just don't get carried away. <laughs> Can someone answer the phone, please? Can someone answer that phone? For oh, sake, do everything yourself. Hello. Hi, Anthony. Tracy B here. Uh, I was on TV this afternoon. You may have seen me. No. <laughs> Well, uh, never mind. Um, look, I really need you to cook up a storm for a very special party I'm holding for Pudsy this week. Listen, Stacey. Tracy. Tracy, OK, fine. Uh, I'd love to be able to help you, but uh, unfortunately I'm cooking a banquet for the Queen on that night. Well, can't she have a takeaway? Listen, Stacey, it's not exactly her cup of tea, is it? OK, well, if you can't do it personally, do you know anyone who can? I mean, preferably on the celeb end of the spectrum. Well, yeah, as it happens, I do know a couple of celebrities who could probably help you out. How about Kirsten and Mark from uh, CBBC Smart? Or there's Anne and Marvin from Stitch Up? Take your pick. Thanks, Tony. No problem, Stace. Tracy. <laughs>
Now listen, I can't make a decision this important on my own. I am going to need major help from you guys. Are you up to it? thought you were, so pick up the phone and help me choose between Kirsten and Mark from Smart and Anne and Marvin from Stitch Up to cook the party food. Now here comes Pudsey with the phone number now, so get dialed and help me out. There's your phone. Sorry it took a while. I think I sprained my ankle. Well, I don't need it now. What? Well, I found a packet of cheese and onion in the drawer and had those. Busy, busy, busy. Lot still sitting there. You've got an important phone call to make. Now. OK, the story of Tracy and Pudsey continues all week here on CBBC One at 4.15. But what's going to happen next? That's where you come in. You need to vote. If you missed how to vote, the lovely Angelica is standing by with details. <laughs> <laughs>